Imagine your children would be taken away from you. What would this be like for you as a parent? Well, this is what we're going to talk about in this video uh, with Natalia Shudakova. She's an American living in Norway and her children were taken away from her in May of 2019. And I'm connected with her now. Hello, Natalia. Hi, Bjorn. Thank you for having me. I want to appreciate you guys, the Step Up for Children Rights. For everything that you're doing to covering this story. It's amazing that you're doing this. Now, you moved to Norway in 2018 in, in September because of a new job situation uh, for, uh, of your husband. Actually, he had, had moved there earlier, a couple of weeks earlier to, to get everything settled with the job and also with your house. And then a couple of weeks later, in early September, you uh, uh, moved there with the kids so that you could be together with uh, as a family. And then you had one nice Christmas. And then the horror began in 2019 in May. Could you explain the situation? What happened in May? Well, there was never a concern. The children were attending school just two minutes away from the house and um, everything was good no one has ever complained about anything no teachers have seen nothing the kids were getting settled getting used to this country i guess even though we didn't plan to stay here permanently you know we were like well as long as he has a work contract if he gets it extended then we will stay for another year or so. But it was never my intention to stay here permanently. And the children didn't have a permit, a personal number. We didn't have it. It took me a year to receive that. And then in May 20th, right after my daughter's birthday, um, Barnabar showed up with three police cars and they just terrorized our family. From that day on, it's been a nightmare. The Barnavan is the uh, Norwegian child welfare system. That's what we have to throw in here. Um, yes. so, so how did this all play out? They all of a sudden came and took your children. What was the story behind all this? without a single warning, without ever talking to us as parents, without even knowing our family, without a court order, anything, nothing, no investigation, nothing. They just showed up in your home and they took the children. They said, you've been accused of child mistreatment. And right away, they handcuffed me and my husband. They took us to jail. And they took the children straight to foster families that same night. So there hasn't been any any CPS worker before that entered your house, no psychologist, nothing. They just came based on an accusation that someone made against you. That's correct. And I believe that, um, you know, these kind of meetings with the children, they should be performed with the presence of a skilled psychologist, not some 25 year old sitting in the corner watching you. She doesn't even have her kids yet. And you know, it just seems very unprofessional when somebody who doesn't know what family is, somebody who doesn't know how to raise a child is sitting there judging you, writing down her reports. That's just nonsense. And when we hired our psychologist to work with uh, the case, the documents, to be able to speak with the children, now they're denying that psychologist. That is a skilled expert. She's been working in this industry, industry for her entire life. Now that we have her involved, She's not allowed to speak with the kids. She's not allowed to observe us as the parents. You know, they're kind of, okay, well. Well, she, so might, she might come to another conclusion than, than they have. 
Maybe that's the reason why. We rejected one of theirs. They offered us their expert, but we were like, no, we're not going to accept that. Let's go back to um, uh, in May 20th when the children were taken. Uh, so basically what happened, what I remember from the story is that uh, somebody from the school found the CPS, the, the Norwegian Barneverne. And when did they actually come to take your children? Actually, it all happened in one day. In one day. It was the school's principal. She sent the letter of concern to Barnevern. And that same day they came. I've never heard any complaints before. If they saw that my children had any problems in school, they could have at least called me and notified me. You know, have a sit with the parents, discuss the issue, help if you can offer any help, you know, but doing this is pure evil. So when they came, this basically happened for you totally out of the blue and you, you did not expect this. When, when did they come? It was late at night. So the children were, were already asleep? Yes. And they ripped the children f basically from, from their beds. Yes, they have. And how did it, and then you said uh, you were put in jail and the kids were g given to uh, foster families. Uh, how long have you been in jail and interrogated? The jail was 24 hours. And after that, me and my husband was interrogated for several hours. It was long, it was through an interpreter. The translation was pretty bad, you know. I think they do it on purpose. Providing somebody who cannot give clear 100% good translation so they, that they can twist, they can twist all that you said in their way. And I've seen it happen. Now my lawyer has to go back to those records, the police interrogation, they have to re-listen to everything, review everything that was said by us and how the things were interpreted and check what they wrote on their documents. And were you given any written documents in, in, that were translated into English because at that time you didn't properly understand Norwegian. They have never provided us with any written documents in English. It was all in Norwegian. I requested Barnevarn to provide us with um, documents on English and they just denied it. They said, your lawyer can do that for you. But we had to change three lawyers already in such a short period of time. I mean, some of them work behind your back with the CBS. Did you know exactly what, what the accusation was? Later, we were told that, yes, uh, your daughter has accused you of violence. But as we know from her video, she lied. It wasn't true, but they took her word for it. Hi, this is Brigitta. I'm 11 years old. I had a birthday May 17th. The next day we went to Oslo and I was stuck to my phone. My parents told me to take, to put it away or something can happen. I'm like, I didn't listen to them. And they took away my phone and then the drama started and then after the drama finished, I told the school about what happened. Ugh. I just asked, I want to go back home. I made a huge mistake and I regret it. For, for what has happened, for the drama that I lied about. I lied about it in school because I didn't know what I was doing, so. I'm making this video for you so you can please understand me and I really want my family back. When she came up with that video, 
saying that I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to say none of those things. That was a lie. They don't believe her anymore. So when the children were taken, uh, that was happened, as we said, in May 20th last year, 2019. Um, when were you allowed to see them the first time? How much time uh, did pass by? It was from May 20th until June 19th that we could not see our children. That's we like were a given, month. We were given one document in the police station to sign. It was a no contact form that we had to sign in order to be released. And then investigation lasted for about two and a half months and they closed the case. Who closed? No the evidence. Case? The police has closed the case. But not surprisingly, Barnavarn has requested the police to reopen that case. But thank God that was, um, they were denied. So the police, the police said, is closing the case? Open. So the police is closing the case, the CPS requesting to re the police to reopen it, and they are being denied, and still uh, they're keeping the children. Yes, that's right. And they just want to open a new case, a new case, a new case after, against me, and finding nothing, zero evidence. And then in, from June on, you were allowed to see the children like once a week? like supervised visits, that's what I remember. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about these, these visits when you were together with the children. What were they like? Uh, yeah, during the summer we were allowed to see the children once a week for two hours under supervision with translator because my husband's English wasn't perfect, so he had to speak Russian. And now they're coming up with an excuse saying, oh, you guys speak Russian, you guys speak English, and we can't follow all five of you, the kids and us, the parents, they just, one translator cannot follow all five of you, what you're saying. That's a lame excuse. You know, if you have to get five translators, that's not my problem. The visits were good. Children, they were so excited and happy to see us. They were telling us all kinds of things, how they were treated, how they were missing home, you know, the food that mommy used to make, everything. There was a lot of tears, but you can't show your emotions in front of CPS because they will use that against you. It was up until September. We were not allowed to talk to the children about the case at all. So if your child is asking you, keeps asking you all the time, mommy, when do I get to go home with you? And your child literally wants to get into your car and not the other car that's parked right next to you. And you're just standing there helpless. You have to tell your child, baby, you have to get into this car. I would love to take you home, but, you know. It was very painful to let them go every time, to relieve again and again that trauma of separation. Every Friday was, thank God you guys are here. And then two hours later, that trauma is there again for everybody, for the kids and us, the parents. No. And then September, the visit stopped. It was the court. We had a three-day hearing. And then two weeks later, we found out the decision from that court that we are not going to see the children anymore, maybe just three times a year. And that was it. And the children uh, at the beginning, were they still all three together in one foster family or were they already split up in different foster families? They were only together for six weeks. And that was the beginning of summer. After that, Brigitte was moved. After that, they just kept moving the children at least every two, three months. 
it wasn't hard for us to find out where the kids lived. There are some people who read the stories on social media, they share their articles, and they just reach out to you and they say, oh, my kid goes to the same class with your son. You know, there, there's people who tell you where the kids are. And as soon as, you know, they, they just want to transfer the kids to new families all the time. Uh, children have been talking about abuse in foster families too. But that is ignored. That is not taken into consideration. I have it recorded when my children told me how they treated him. Nikita and Brigitte, they told me about violence from foster families. Yeah. Well, one time she messaged me on her TikTok account. She asked, Mommy, please call the police. I'm with a psycho. He's hurt me badly. I'm like, baby, I can't call the police. I'm not even supposed to be talking to you on, on TikTok, you know. But she managed to call the police once. She spent one hour on the phone with them. And all they did was transfer her back to the foster dad. That's it. She said that he was violent to her. They don't believe that. I believe that they should open investigation against that foster dad, just like they did against us. That's double standards. And the kids, they are now in, in three different foster families. So each one is in, an, in another foster family. And do they have any contact with each other as siblings? As far as I know, the children don't have any visits together. They, they told us, Barnavarn told us that children sometimes call each other on FaceTime, but I don't believe a single word that comes out of their mouth. So here we have children that are being taken and uh, now all the visitations are canceled. They're not allowed to see their parents. They're not allowed to see each other. Uh, they don't even speak their own language. Uh, this really looks like their whole identity is being erased, which is a complete violation of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Now, um, Natalia, tell us, what are your options now in order to to fight, in order to get your children back? Well, as I said earlier, we have hired an expert uh, psychologist who is working on the case right now. She's still going to write her report for the court. She has assessed us as the parents. They had to assess both parents and the children but now she's only able to do that with us. And we are gonna go to another court in April after Easter. Uh, we may have some more chances there. That's the court where we can actually present all the evidence we have. Before in previous courts, we didn't even get a chance to show any evidence, but now we can do that. And I hope that this time is gonna work. I know there's hundreds of Christians praying for us, if not thousands, praying for this situation to be resolved. And I know something is gonna be done. Otherwise, it's just, I'm not gonna accept it, no. Also, we have to mention here that you are an American citizen and all of your children were born in, in the United States. You were originally from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and one would actually expect that the U.S. State Department would step in there and, and, and help you to get the children back. Uh, have you contacted the embassy? What have they said to you? I've been in contact with the embassy since summer 2019. And I have written a few letters to President Trump. I have reached out to my local senators and congressmen. I wrote to them and they also 
wrote emails to the embassy directly. As soon as they got a letter from me, the next day they write to the embassy asking for more information, what's happening. And the embassy said that we're monitoring the situation very closely and the U.S. consulate and Lithuanian consulate also. They will be present in court to observe, to take notes. And, you know, that's really good. I, I believe that is really good for us to have somebody, to have American diplomats present in court. But so far, they have uh, only been monitoring the case. If that's what they can do, you know, maybe that will change some things. Well, how a personal question here, how are you able to, to live with that situation? I mean, you and, and your husband as a couple, how, how can you cope with this situation? Not seeing your children, not knowing where they are, not, how, not knowing if they're doing okay. How, how, how do you live with that? It's a tough question. I, I can hardly manage this. You know, there is a big hole inside of me, like big, big piece of me is missing. But I have to be strong. I have to because I know they will come back. I know my children will come back to me and I have to be ready for that. I'm not going to give up. Well, thank you so much, Natalia, for sharing all of this with us. And uh, to everybody out there watching this now, please uh, help us to support Natalia and her family and her wonderful children, that they can come home to mommy and daddy as quickly as possible. And here's how you can do that. You can share this video so that many people will hear and see what's going on in Norway. And let me just tell you this, that this is not just an individual case. There are many similar cases like this. Uh, so please share this video uh, and in the video description, you'll find a link to a Citizen Go petition that we have for them. If you haven't signed it yet, please sign it and also share this with others. Um, this goes to Vice uh, President Mike Pence, where we ask him to uh, interfere uh, in this uh, situation that uh, he would step in and help his family. So please, please sign this petition and help us to spread this information on the Internet. And uh, Natalia, let me just finish with this. Uh, all our prayers, they are with you. And uh, we won't be silent until you get your children back. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching and God bless. And thank you for your help out there as well.